This video is pretty interesting because it's basically us redoing the work from the last video. Also, pardon all the sweat, but the shop is really hot. So basically what happened is when I did the mounts for the engine and transmission, I didn't have the tension rod bracket in, nor did I have the rack and pinion in. So when I finally went to go put the rack and pinion in, as well as the tension rod bracket in, um, there was a few issues. If you look down here, you see the rack is basically just touching the bottom of the crank baffle right there. So that's a no-no, obviously, and I can't make an oil pan with that little clearance. The power steering pump, too, was like, oh, let me touch your tension rod bolt, bro. And I'm like, no, don't touch it, bro. But it's like, no, I'm going to touch it anyways, bro. And then now it's touching that, so. Take that trans mount, flip a Ruski, so this, this bitch go back, right? And on top of that, it's going to raise a Ruski. And then hopefully all of our problems are solved. If not, I'm going to kill myself. No! Now the reason that there was an issue is because I looked at other motor mounts and everything when making these ones and basically Performance VH is the only person that really sells conversion kits. Performance VH, they say you can use the stock trans mount, just flip it 180 degrees so it pushes the engine back. Now I didn't flip it 180 degrees because that it has nothing to do with about the engine being level. So I kept that mount and all I did was replace it with a hockey puck but it sat the same height. So the transmission is at the same height so I made the engine level with that and now we're all good, and it should have had enough clearance to make an oil pan there, because Performance VH says, you know, you can fit our oil pan with their mounts and everything, right? But when I put the rack and pinion in, it's touching the bottom of the crank baffle, so there's absolutely no room to make an oil pan there. Now the thing is that when I made my motor mounts, I made sure that everything was level and it matched the flange on the diff, so that way you have a correct pinion angle for your drive shaft, right? And it doesn't cause any weird vibrations, because that's a big no-no. But of course, there's no guarantee that Performance VH is even doing that because there's absolutely no room to create an oil pan under there when you have the transmission at the stock transmission height. There's, it's, it's not happening. There's absolutely no room. So the only way to make room is to lift the engine up, basically. Then you have the transmission dipping down like that. And then, of course, then your flange on the diff is like flat. And then, of course, those don't match up, which is... No, no. Now I'm not trying to talk about on Performance VH so they can show that it's level or whatever, then kudos, but I just don't see how that it was possible with a stock trans mount to have any room whatsoever to make an oil pan when everything is at the uh, correct angle. Now the plan was to just basically raise the engine and transmission enough in order for me to have enough room to make an oil pan there. But the problem with that is that our whole goal behind using this engine was that we could use the stock two-piece drive shaft. And that way we wouldn't have to pay to have a custom drive shaft made. But if we raise the engine and transmission, then the stock two-piece drive shaft doesn't work because it's, uh, it has a carrier bearing there and so it doesn't really allow for any uh, variation in the height of where the transmission is supposed to be. And so that kind of defeated the whole purpose of the swap because the way we factored it was it would be cheaper because we wouldn't have to buy an intercooler or a drive shaft. But now at this point, it's basically ended up being the same exact cost uh, having gone with a different um, engine choice. So now we've gotten to the point where we decided that we're going to have a custom drive shaft made. Now because we're going to have a custom drive shaft made, I can go ahead and make this as high as I want. I can push it back as far as I want. So that's what I did. So what you can do on a 300ZX is just take the stock transmission cross member and flip it 180 degrees. And then the transmission and engine sits back a little bit further. It's better for weight distribution. It gives more room for your radiator over here. It helps with the power steering pump not interfering with the tension rod bracket. So all that ends up being better. So plan is raise the mounts and also flip the transmission cross member around so it brings everything back. And uh, yeah, that's the, that's the plan. So here I am with the transmission mount taken apart for uh, Edie's Z32 with the VH45 in it. Well, the first problem is that the entire setup just isn't high enough. So instead what I'm gonna do to make everything higher is to stack another hockey puck on it. So I got another one done up. Then of course the bolt wasn't long enough, so I punched it through. And then on punching it through, I realized that really this weld over here, because I grinded everything flush to sit flush against transmission, um, really wasn't that strong. So I got a new bolt over here that's even longer to fit through everything. So I'm gonna drop that through and then probably just weld this bolt head directly here. And then I'll grind the transmission on the bottom a little bit, just to have enough clearance in one little spot for this bolt head to be right there. And yet this bracket to still sit flush. And then the third thing is that the metal on the cross member itself is just kind of weak. So what I'm going to do is take an eighth inch piece of steel, I drill a hole in it, and then weld it on top over here just to reinforce it. So overall, like a whole better setup. Higher, stronger there, then stronger over here. Here's my piece of eighth inch. Here's the cross member.
Okay, here we are. You can see the plate welded on top. Finally getting a little bit more practice with welding, so. And since I keep welding on this project, I actually got back to, you know, like how I used to weld pretty consistently, so. There we go, there's that plate. So now that's all an eighth inch plus whatever this is. I think it's a little bit less than eighth inch all on top, so that's all nice then. Bolt goes there. Gonna have a nice thick surface to bolt to. Then here is my new longer bolt, and you can see I actually welded the head this time instead of grinding it down and just welding the stud in place. So there is the bolt for that. So now I can fit two hockey pucks on there. All good. And so I have lots of threading in order to go through this thick cross member and have a nut on the back. Now in order to clear the new modifications we made to the trans mount, I'm going to have to shave down this little center section of the transmission over here just so it can clear the bolt head that is welded to the transmission mount. And then after that we should be all good to bolt it up. Barely shaved some, made it nice and rounded. See. Now we go, everything's sitting flush over here. It even has room to move around. Here is the assembled masterpiece. New bolt, two hockey pucks, plate welded in over here, nice and thick. That way I can really tighten down on that. And there we go. I'm gonna test fit it, of course, and then once everything's done, I'll take it out and uh, paint it. I've done some hammering now because the transmission sits higher than before, so that is to clear the starter. All in there, you see how it's all beat. So that's just to get more clearance. Because this plate right here was sitting so high now that it was hitting the top of the trans tunnel. So hopefully I've made clearance for everything now. There was actually quite a bit of hammering that needed to get done on the trans tunnel because not only did the front of the transmission have a hard time fitting in there, but then the uh, starter didn't have enough room and then also the like all back towards the shift didn't have enough room either. So I spent a lot, a lot of hours hammering it and the engine had to get pulled by myself about six times I think. I put the transmission and engine in and out of the car in order to keep hammering, see if it had clearance, keep hammering, see if it had clearance. Etc. But uh, eventually it, uh, it got done and we had clearance. Bye bye, old motor mounts. So I got the right side as well as left side mounts back down to just base plates. It's so now I'm going to go put these back on the car and the engine and then refab them up for the new position of the VH. Just finished welding her up. So. You can see the side that goes to the cross member, the side that goes to the engine. Two little, I think it's like three eighths inch rod in between. Now same on the right side as well. Now just unbolt the mounts, take them out, weld in a piece of DOM, and we should be back to where we were last time. Mounts are out of the car. And there's the left side mount. Right side mount, right side tube. Just like that, nice. Previously I was using inch and a half DOM and now I've moved that up to one and three quarter inch. So just a little bit bigger. And it really the only reason I did that was because I was running low on my inch and a half scrap. But I have a good amount of inch and three quarter scrap, so I'm trying to use this. Here's the two mounts done. So, they came out all right. So we just gotta take these two, put them in the car, we'll be done. Final overview of how the engine transmission sit in there. We got our mounts sitting nice and high. We have plenty gap down there in between the crank baffle and the rack and pinion, which the rack is right there. 
cranked apples right there and they used to be touching right on top of each other. So now we have room to make our oil pan. Power steering pump is no longer super close to that tension rod bolt. The engine is leveled right left, front back, and also centered in the engine bay. And this time, instead of eyeballing it, I actually measured off the frame rail. And so I got it perfectly in the center. And then in the interior, you could see how much we ended up hammering out the trans tunnel. To fit the transmission in the new higher position. Finally, it's over. The transmission and motor mounts are done. So everything can be sitting in here. Now we get onto fabbing the oil pan, which I should have already done had I not had to run into this issue. And uh, overall, everything seems to be coming together now. Finally. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this episode and you learned something from it. 10 out of 10, uh, something that you should learn is probably not to put a VH into a 300ZX. Um, I really don't like the idea of it, and this is turning out to be way more work than we anticipated, and it would have been easier to go with a different engine, especially one that wasn't a V8. Anyways, check out our cool products on offbeatgarage.com, and then also support us on Patreon if you like the videos. But anyways, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! Bye.